I, I always say that this second, there's billions yeah. of little bits of light falling around the world and making beautiful pictures, which are, are quite insignificant in a way. So how do you actually, you know, give them value? Hidden in a quiet East London neighbourhood lies a secluded photography studio, a sanctuary for analogue art and a space for some of the world's most iconic young photographers. Founded in 2011 by John McCarthy, Cosimo da Prano and the late Jeremy Ramsden, Labyrinth is a gem, a rare haven for artisans dedicated to film development and passionate about the art of hand printing. Yeah, we're coming up to our fifth anniversary, so, you know, going back five years ago, film was in a little bit of a quandrum, what's going to happen with it? And all the big, big labs, the big boys were, were getting out of it because, um, it, you know, it changed from when they were getting like 400, 500 rolls in a job and, you know, digital was, was taking over and was going to be the new messiah. <laughs> Me and Cos had worked through different labs and always had our, our core clients. And as we moved from lab to lab, they stayed with us. And it was, it was much more about having that personal service and contact. You know, we'd very often get the phone call before they'd even shoot the job. And, you know, well, what, how should we do this? And it's not because we're experts, it's because we see so much film and we see so much coming through. And so we can sort of, you know, point them in the right direction. Well, you could use this and that. And, and we, we always were really hands-on, like even, probably shouldn't be doing it, but changing the temperature of the films to get the contrast to change. And um, you know, doing a, a very bespoke service. Labs like this are the reason that I've been able to do, you know, like what I do, you know, whether it's, you know, offer it, you know, giving kind of deals, like just supporting you so you don't have to pay, you know, because of the price, this is something you know, I should have said in the yeah. price. When you're starting out, there's, you know, the, these are the sort of places which give you opportunity to get going. We carried on as the, as the labs disappeared and because we're just renting rooms, mm -hmm. but we just thought, no, we've got to set up a brand, a company. And, um, you know, like I say, five years ago, we weren't quite sure it would work, but we thought, you know, with cars it's pushing, come on, we'll go for it. And, you know, the first year was a little bit of, like any business establishing it, but since then it's just grown and grown and, and, you know, people now can choose to shoot digital or shoot on film. But I think once they shoot on film, they, they want to do more with it. I was setting up that, that five years ago and we really feel, that we, you know, at the beginning especially we were st almost alone flying this flag. You know, there's probably four other labs that do hand printing and that. Um, and, but, you know, like I say, the big boys have just got out of film. Um, I don't know if they're regretting it yet. <laughs> but before that, the early days of colour, um, colour was very difficult because yeah. early carbon printing was very difficult. So Kodak actually invented dye transfer printing, and that for started in the, the 1930s, I think early tw late 20s. But that became a set colour, the, the industry standard. So you would do your shoot, you would get a dye transfer print made. There were hundreds of commercial labs to do it, and then that went to the offset printers, and they copied that. And that existed till the 70s, 80s, as being you know the the standard for colour. So at the moment, jeans putting the matrixes in the dies and then rolling them out on the paper. So you have your three um, additive colours, your red, green and blue, which the negative or transparency is separated out through, and then you have your three subtractive colours, your cyan, magenta and yellow. Between those three colours you should get every colour in the spectrum. So that's what we do. And um, pour them out and then to be able to not only have our working solution, to be able to have them in the trays and have them in balance and have them hopefully give us a grey. We just wash off the excess dye um, into um, very um, dilute baths of acetic acid and that kind of acidifies the dye and makes sure that it stays on the matrix. And this paper has been soaked in an alkaline paper conditioner and so now it has a more dawned on it which should take the dyes. So I'll roll that out. Now you, the yellow sit for four minutes and then when I pull it up hopefully it'll be nice and grey. Uh, it'll be nice and grey and the dyes will be in balance and that's what we're looking for. Hmm. And you can never tell it often looks good on this side and then when you pull it up it's <laughs> but that is it, it, it does look pretty grey yeah. 
but that's a good result there. Thanks. <laughs>